If you were a body of water, would you protect yourself? If you knew that your water body was connected to every other water body, human and non-human, because you were part of the water cycle, would you begin to protect your waters? You are a body of water, surrounded by land, a human estuary, like the estuaries of our planet, where fresh water meets the sea, but the land is your skin. Your skin, like soil, absorbs the contaminants carried to it by water through its surface. What the water carries to your skin percolates into your body and is absorbed more readily than through ingestion or inhalation. 20 feet of blood vessels in every square inch of your skin allows for more healthy or toxic things, lotions, hairspray, makeup, shampoo, cleaning solvents, and chlorine to be absorbed than if you drank them. What your body absorbs, what you drink, rub on, breathe in, becomes part of the water cycle in your internal environment, as the physiologists call it. When it is excreted through your sweat and urine, it returns to all of us through what I call the water web. The water web. Unlike traditional methods of the water cycle, your body is included. Your internal environment is a habitat for every cell of your being. You are an aquatic environment. 77% water at birth. What this means is that you are a movable body of water splashing down the street. <laughs> Why is this important? Critical. Because it all comes back to the faulty language we embrace that reinforces a false belief that we are something other than nature. In the environmental movement, we want children in nature, urban folks in nature, humans and the environment to be connected. However, our language reinforces a false separation. Humans are nature, which needs to be recategorized as moving bodies of water, much like estuaries. Why? Because our language gives us our place in the world in the way we organize it and protect it. If we shift our language, we will shift our understanding. We will see that our urine streams, our blood streams are connected to the veins of the planet. As naturalists, we accept the system of Linnaeus of observation. We say that life in an aquatic environment that's toxic is less harmful to us. But what we fail to see in this analogy and to accept is that we, like aquatic life, are constantly immersed in our internal sea. I go back to my father's death from bladder cancer, exposure to asbestos, chlorinated water, cigarettes, and saccharin two things inhaled and two absorbed, two things ingested. Our bladders are the estuaries where our internal rivers meet. As naturalists, we rely upon Linnaeus' system of taxonomy, but what we fail to detect is the cultural colonialism that's embedded in his view as a naturalist. Other cultures organize their observations and their experiences of the natural world differently. I came to understand the importance of language and culture from the Western response to the rest of the natural world as I grew in my work as a storyteller. I learned from Native American storyteller Joseph Brukak that it's hard in the English language to speak in the old way. 
when there was no separate word for animals and human until the translators came. If you know you are a water body, capillaries of creeks, streams, and rivers containing runoff from farms, rooftops, airports, and driveways, your bladder and estuary, if you knew you were as contaminated as Puget Sound or the orcas that swim in our waters, what would you do? At Urban Wilderness Project, we responded by teaching our community and our youth to protect their internal and external ecosystems on our 17-day wilderness trip. So if the water quality sampling of your urine and blood showed traces of rocket fuel, atrazine, BPA, PCBs, PDEs, found like those in Puget Sound, if the urine samples of 100% of the people tested by the Center for Disease Control showed BPH traces in their urine, and there was a difference along race and gender lines, and your body of water was more exposed, do you require extra protection? Is our myopic categorization of life forms putting us at greater risk because we fail to see ourselves as animals who are human bodies of water. If human estuaries were a species, would you be endangered? Find out. Thank you. <laughs>